All right, this is grade 8, J9 of IXL, and we're solving percent equations. So this is where our proportions will come in handy again. So let's do a quick review of our generic percent proportion. So it's always 100, right? This is what percent means. So this is our percentage. This is our part, part, and this is the whole. So essentially what that means is we can multiply and multiply and things work out pretty well for us. So let's take a look at some of these. Four is what percent of five? That means we want to know this one. So four is the part of five is the whole. So we can actually just straight away figure this out as, wait a minute, we want to be over 100, which means I'm going to multiply this by 20. Whatever I do to the bottom, that I do to the top. So this will be 80%. Again, this is really 4 divided by 5, and it goes in 8 times with nothing left over, so that is 80% is another way to do this if you're dividing. We'll do that a little bit later as well. So 90% of 60, so that is 9 times 6, which is 54, and this is almost the whole thing, and so sure enough, we've ignored the decimals. This would actually be 0 0.9 times 60, but this 0 and that decimal cancel each other out. So we're left with just 54. So 9 times 6, and then we put the decimal point back in where it's appropriate, in this case, right back over here. So not so bad. And then if we want to set this, this as a proportion, we'd say, well, now we've got 90 over 100. That's our percent. Of 60, that's our whole. And we're trying to find the part. So notice when I multiply this, I get x equals 5400 divided by 100. And sure enough, those cancel, leaving just 54. So this is another way to solve it using variables. 30% of some number is 24. OK, so now we set up our proportion. We say 30% of some number is 24. So of the number, that's going to be down here, the thing we don't know, the whole. And it's going to be 24. So we can do some reduction here, get rid of the zeros. 3 and 24 share a common factor, right? This becomes 1, this becomes 8. Now I can cross multiply. x times 1 is x, 10 times 8 is 80. So sure enough, 80 is our answer. Now you may also notice that if we were to have left this, we would say 24 over x equals 30 over 100. Now if we just cross multiply this, got 30x equals 24 over 100. Divide both sides by 30. So x equals 2400 divided by 30. Well, if we get rid of those zeros, it's 240 divided by 3. So if you notice, it's 24 divided by 3. So if we could have started with that, 24 over 3, and gotten 8, and so this is about a third, so it can't be 8, it's going to be 80. That's another way to do it as well, is simply divide the percentage into the part. And that will tell you what the whole is. You do have to be aware of the decimals and zeros. Let's do some more examples. Okay, 9 is what percent of 36? So we want, again, we've got part over whole equals percent over 100, so 9 is what percent? It means we're trying to find this one right here, so we know the part and the whole. And 9 is the part of 36 we're trying to find, and sure enough, we can reduce that to 1 fourth. If you know your fraction to decimals, that's 25%. 25%. Ooh, here's a good one. 152,000 is what percent of 80,000? Well, I notice already that this number is bigger than this one means this has to be greater than 100%. So when I set up my proportion, I start with 152,000 is the part over 80,000. And I'm trying to find the percent. So let's do some reduction. This 0, this 0, and this 0 all cancel out. I can also cancel out horizontally. So this, this 0 and that 0 cancels out. Now I can do some more reduction. 
say, well, 8 goes into 152, goes into once, and it goes in almost 20 times, minus 1. So it goes in 19 times. So this is 1 and 19. Now I can do some great cross multiplying because 1 times x is just x. 10 times 19 is 190. Now, we're looking for percent, and sure enough, 80 is almost double this one, so 190%. So we can reset up the proportion, do some reduction, and then cross multiply once we have the numbers a lot smaller. And 308 is 140% of what number? So again, I 140%, which means and 308 is the part, and the whole has to be less than that because we've gone over 100%. So let's set up our proportion. We have 308 is the part over some number is 140% of 100. Let's do some reduction, reduction. And we can do another reduction here. I see that 10 becomes 5, and 14 becomes 7. And I can do some division here because 7 goes into 30 four times with 2 left over. 7 goes into 28 four times. So this reduces to 1 and 44. So now I've reduced as much as possible, and I can go ahead and do my cross multiplying. x times 1 is x. 5 times 44 is 220. So 220 is the original number. And if I take 140%, or about 1 and a half times, I'll get up to 308. So to review the steps, write up your proportion reduce vertically or horizontally, and cross-multiply once the numbers are small. All right, so 27 is what percent of 20? So we, 27 is a percentage of 20. In this case, it is over 100% because 27 is greater than 20. We set up our proportion. And sure enough, we can do some cross-reducing. So 20 becomes 1. It goes in there exactly 5 times. x times 1 is x. And 5 times 27 is 135. So it's a percentage, so 135%. This is the same as the problem earlier, so we won't do this one. It was 190%. Okay, so 48, 483 is what percent of 420? We start with 483 is what percent, which means it is the part. And we have this. So now we have to do some reduction because these numbers are pretty big. This 10 and this 10 go away. I can even reduce one more time. This is 5. 2 goes in here, that's 21. So now the question is, can 21 go into 483? Well, it's 483 over 21. So 21 goes into 48 two times with 6 left over. And 21 into 63 three times. So this becomes 1, this becomes 23. So 1 times x is x. 5 times 23 is 115. So this is 115 percent. Again, set up the proportion, reduce all over the place horizontally and vertically and then cross multiply. And the last one, this is a monster. So we've got 142% of some number. So let's set up our proportion, 142% of some number is 27,761. So let's do some reduction. So I see that two goes to both of these. This becomes 50. This becomes 71 now. 71 doesn't reduce to 50, so that's problematic. So I'm going to make a wild guess that 71 goes nice and evenly into this. So we'll, let's, let's see if we can make that happen. 2, 7, 7, 6, 1. 71. So 71 goes in, doesn't go into 27, it goes into 207. Well, 7 goes into 27 about three times. 3 times 70 is 210, so 200. 13, which means there, 213 means that there are 64 left over. So that's a big one. 
7 goes into 639 times, so that'll work. 7 is 639, which means there's 7 left over, and sure enough, 1 left. So I took a wild guess that 71 went into this evenly, and it did. So this becomes 1, and this becomes 391. Now I cross multiply, x times 1 is x. Ooh, 50 times 391, that's a big one. 391 times 5, 0, 5. 5 times 9 is 45, 5 times 3 is 15, and we add these up, 5, 5, 9, 1. And don't remember, this is actually 50, so we throw another 0 on, we get 1, 9, 5, 5, 0 as our final answer. So again, each of these set up the proportion, reduce horizontally and vertically, and then cross-multiply.